Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ava Gallery and Art Center. I'm Trip Anderson, Executive Director here for almost exactly two years now. I think one month shy. But uh, we're thrilled to have Boy in here and thrilled that he's sharing his work with us and his creative energies. And I'm sure we're all anxious to hear about that tonight. Um, I will. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mila Pin again, uh, our uh, exhibition manager, um, who will introduce Boyan to Mila. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here on this kind of cold and rainy day, but it's great to be inside where it's dry with art. <laughs> um, it's my pleasure to introduce Boyan Moskov. Um, Boyan received his formal art training at the Torian Art School and the Sofia National Art Academy. Um, he has also been recognized for his ceramics at the New Hampshire League um, Craftsman uh, and been acknowledged for awards there. Um, and I really think it's so fun that Boyan is one of these artists that continues to push himself it, you know, I've seen photos of other work and it looks nothing like this, and I'm sure whatever he's doing now is completely different. And um, that's just so exciting to see someone who continues to see their work and rethink it and continue to um, move forward, you know, and not just um, be satisfied with what they have now. So uh, without any further ado, thank you for being here. Boyan Moskov. Uh, I'm definitely not doing this like one, I'm saying who I am, two, I'm doing something else. Uh, I'm just going to be casual. I'm definitely uh, not good at this stuff, but I'll try. Um, I'll bore you out first with who I am. So I, I, I grew up, I, I was born in Bulgaria, just briefly. Um, went to a boarding school for arts, then I went to a couple other schools, including Art Academy of um, Sofia, and um, a school in um, Sweden, um, art school in Sweden. So after that, I start my business as a potter, and uh, it's so much pressure. This is all like crazy. <laughs> uh, Okay, and yeah, I did that school. Um, I started making pottery and start making a um, living out of it. So that was uh, pretty much how my life has been going since um, I was 13 when I got into, uh, in, went to that boarding school. Um, yeah, um, I was interested in doing something more than just um, I'm saying just, but it's not just, it's still good stuff, you know, mugs and uh, uh, utilitarian ceramics. And uh, I wanted to be an artist, artist, like to make crazy stuff. But that's <laughs> just so hard. I can't do that. And um, it's not easy to figure out how to, to make crazy stuff. And it's not just making crazy stuff. You have to be crazy. And you make things you think they normal to you, but they come out crazy. And they look crazy for other people because you make who, things, they come from you. And that's who I am. So quite crazy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what would be interesting to, uh, for you to know, but I, um, I'm usually when I talk as an artist, I talk to myself, and even in, in I never, very rare I would have like social conversation with people, and it's again about my about me, it's not about I never talk to other people about their things, so I'm used to talking to myself, and it, that's monologue all the time. That's all I do. I stay at home and I work at ho from home and I, ha I talk to myself and now we have a dog and I talk to the dog a little bit. <laughs> um, but it's still about me. What I have to figure out and how to make things perfect as possible. Um, 
all that here, that I, all these pieces here, I did not intend to look that way. In my head, they were absolutely different than what it what they look like now. But uh, I couldn't see that. I, I don't know how to make something that in my head looks one way, and I, and and I, to make something that looks exactly like I see it in my head. Um, and my problem is, if that's a problem, is how I can take, um, I can start making a piece and work on something. And uh, if I don't have fun while I'm doing it, I don't enjoy it. And it shows. And I don't finish it. And I, and I take a turn, a different turn, and I start a different direction and start making something else. So things switch not yearly or monthly for me, but they, they, they change every minute in my life is, is general, in general. Uh, I just do things like on the go. I experiment all the time and I do um, um, like to, f to, to, to keep looking for, for more um, interesting, not really, but like entertaining uh, look when you see something. And when I see something, I want to see and say, or not say anything, but know that this is like amazing. And that's what I'm trying to, to make. I don't have any insp like particular uh, theme that I work with. I don't have, I'm not in inspired by political or politics, or or, or um, nature. Nature is the opposite. It's not inspirational for me. Um, I wanted. This is all in my brain stuff that you would probably have, you know, taking drugs and, and and kind of see things that way. Maybe I don't know. And it's not like you see that in nature everywhere and be like, oh yeah, I can see this here. No, it's just in my brain. I try to uh, be able to make something. If I didn't have nature, if I didn't have anything surroundings, uh, any of the surroundings, I would be able to uh, be creative and just keep going and, and have like, not looking out, but looking in, um, like micro um, uh, inspiration. Like so, you can take a little thing in, in being inspired by it, like, or just a little thought, and then can grow to something bigger. I guess I'm saying this today or tonight, and I'm not going to think that way tomorrow or two hours later, but it's all about changing. I mean, the, uh, nothing stays the same. Everything changes. Uh, you think that it's 5 o'clock this week, but next week it will be 6 o'clock, right? And it's not, they change the weather. I mean, the, the time. Mm -hmm. And it's always like the same thing. You think, you make something, I see something in my head, and when I get it out of the kiln, that will take probably a month till I get a piece like that out of the kiln, and I don't know what to think. I look at it, and it's like, is that? Ins is, 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 and I see things just, and I, I'm the only one see those pieces. I, when I do shows, is when I, um, when I get to, to know what people think and how they see, that uh, the pieces I make, and I'm surrounded by those pieces in my studio, and they look one way to me in when they're in this beautiful setup here they look different and I they look so nice I'm that it, it's like I didn't make those that's how I feel that it's like <laughs> somebody else did that because I'm not always I'm never satisfied with my results and what I when I make stuff um, all over the place as usual. So if I can take questions, if anybody wants to direct me in, in a, well, in you a way. Can go through your, like, pick one piece and sort of tell us the process of the one piece? Yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. 
Um, did, did it have a gel on, on the bottom? It did yeah. Have yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's heavy, so it's yeah. gonna stay. I'm just gonna, okay, so this is thrown on the wheel. When I work, I, uh, I'm very fast and my best is when I'm, uh, I'm at my best when I'm on the wheel. And I throw a piece that it's a boring, smooth piece that it's sort of round shape or it could be cylindric um, shape. And I start to alter it. This is, I pushed it. I, it's been pushed on, from inside and then pushed from the outside in with a little piece of wood, two by four or something that I can find in my studio. And this is just my hands and my fingers here that I create little shapes and I sculpt it to, I'm interested in sculpture in general, but um, it's very hard to find, a, you know, your own, or very hard for me to find my own look and just go with that forever and be, I, I, I like everything. I, and I don't have patience to, to wait. Ceramics are not the best um, medium for me because it's a process. You have to wait five, um, like three, four weeks, sometimes a month. And, um, and it doesn't look anything, uh, it, it just, you can't tell what's gonna look like after the, the kiln is done. And it's, and it's always different. It changes the, the entire process is just changing until at the very end I'm exhausted because oh come on is that what you, you look like now because uh, you know I've been trying to uh, to be to, to pace myself and just wait until it's done uh, and yeah it surprises me to make it to, um, like a raw clay on the wheel and then the next morning is a little drier and it's already uh, changed a little, it shrinks and moves, and it's, it's a, it's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, uh, so that's what, um, I, I, I also want to make easy stuff, because it doesn't mean that it's, it's made easy and fast, that doesn't mean that it's not valuable. So, I don't like a little, um, uh, I call them, chatty things all over, the, uh, like people will take time and that will be time consuming and labor and carve a lot. Of, I've done this, of course, but you know, but they will go for little details and a little fish here, a little flower there and a lot. I don't like that. I prefer to do, that's too much for me. I'm busy. I have to cook dinner. I have to enjoy <laughs> what I, and I try to make everything as fast as possible, but decent. And um, that's the result of my, um, it, I would take a, a little syringe middle tool that it's like full with glaze and uh, squeeze it and kind of uh, apply the glaze on this piece here. And I've done on every piece almost the same way. I like bold, I like, um, the whole picture, just something that uh, stays strong and uh, always shows in, in, I've been trying, I tried with those particular pieces, these particular pieces to, to make something more smooth, more curvy, more mellow, because I usually like strong things like slap and um, kind of industrial looking stuff. Here I made something different for this particular um, show and uh, very satisfied, very satisfied with everything. Yeah, every single piece is I, I love here. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do after the, um, I bring them back home, probably put them in the corner somewhere and then on the, the, attic, uh, the attic and then just um, never see them again until somebody else comes to my studio and be like, hey, can I go upstairs and see if you have anything? <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I have maybe, uh, well, recently, a, a couple of months ago, I counted how many pieces I have without the pieces that I have out for um, exhibits. 
in there on the shelf somewhere. Um, I had um, close to 250 pieces that are in my studio all the time. Because uh, I keep looking for something, uh, keep looking for more, for better pieces. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm always keep making more and more to, to eventually get to the point that I make the, the perfect piece and be like, yeah, now I'm satisfied. I can retire and just go do something else. <laughs> and kind of the way I, I always think. Like, I want to get it done. I want to be perfect. And while I'm done with that, I get very obsessive. And when I'm done, that's it. Then I can go and uh, enjoy fishing. And that's another thing I've been trying to get to. But <laughs> it's really hard. Not much to do in New Hampshire, sorry, but <laughs> it's like pottery is my only thing and a little bit summer for cleaning up the yard. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your process on this, how it developed from the wheel and does the wheel just spin really slowly when you're working on it? It's just, it's a flat, it's, it doesn't have the bumps or anything. I create the bumps after I stop the wheel. It's yeah. It's yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's altering, and I alter it. it. It's just the easy way to get, for me, the easiest way to get a piece to stand up, you know, instead of coiling or um, uh, like any type of hand building or slab building. Uh, my way is to to do this on the wheel very fast. I just, for five minutes I have a piece that it's, I can start altering and I can make it look like anything. Um, it could be sharp uh, with sharp edges or smooth edges or can be oval, oblong um, or triangle or square piece. It's basically as when you throw a cylinder on the, on the wheel it's like a slap that it's been connected so you have it already so I start there's a little lines some somewhere you can see a little lines from throwing because you can't skip that it's always from your fingers the, the little cold throwing lines or whatever they call it but um, it doesn't matter it's a handmade so is yeah. it, are the three to four weeks is, a, is that the firing and refiring of the glazes? It's just drying. It's, you dry. have to dry it slow, slow, and it's like aging uh, other things. <laughs> it's like aging. It's like just wait. Do, do you lose many of them? Do you What's that? Do you lose many of them? Does something crack? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a big pile next to the studio that first I wasn't worry about it because I'm like, yeah, it's just a couple pieces in and I'm going to start making the good stuff and I don't need to worry about that pile. Now it's, I need to um, hire a backhoe or bulldozer or something to get, <laughs> to clean it. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. It's like it's <laughs> out of control. Um, so this is where my money are, all my money go <laughs> in that pile. So when you, when you see a piece here, it's, it's like when I first started, it was 50-50. Uh, like half of the works I make would go to the pile, other half would go to the shows. Um, now it's less than that, but it's really hard to, when you see a piece, it's, you see something that made it through all that. Um, it's very hard to be liked by me. I'm the, I'm the worst, I judge, I, I'm very, I don't like much. So I'm also, I don't like my stuff. And when I see them, I don't let them get in the kiln now if they're not good enough. Well, I, I'm sure everybody does that at, uh, at different levels, but with me it's just like dramatic. Um, and, um, those all, they made it, so <laughs> they now have a life, they exist. I can easily throw them on that pile if I start getting too crowded in my studio, but um, 
I don't ever think about where they're going to go, how they're going to, um, and where they're going to end up being in, in the house or in the, but, uh, you know, this is not like something that it's meant to be like beautiful aesthetics that um, you need to put in your house. I don't think about that. I don't make those that way. If you see, if a few people see a purpose for those, uh, they like them and, and they have them in their houses. But I don't start from there. I always start from make a coffee in the morning, make sure everybody has breakfast. Then I go to the studio and that's the process. That's the fun of being there, making something. That's my reward. Of, and, it, and I end up with a piece like that or several, or 200 right now. Uh, and I don't know what to do with them. So I, start, I have to start thinking, where are they going to go? Is anybody going to like a piece like that? And are they, are they meant to be uh, on a spotlight, under a spotlight in, in a niche? Or they just like a, 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 a thing that I create, you know, and I don't know somebody else has, has have to deal with it until I have, you know, have to move them away from me to make more, mm -hmm. unless that happens. Yeah, did that, that make sense? <laughs> and that's my wife. <laughs> right? They got here, so how did they get here? They, get, they got here because um, I decide to give it a try and do, um, I used to do shows around the, the country traveling, and that was exhausting and um, not worth it for me. I was still, I don't have much to offer, like, in a, in a way of uh, you know, something beautiful, that it's pretty as well, you know, I, I make things and I'm not, I don't stay consistent, so I, people are surprised. Oh, were you here last year? No, uh, yes, I was here. I don't remember those stuff. Well, that's because I changed four times since the last year, what <laughs> I was doing. Uh, what do you, oh, do you have those things again, the things I hear at the show? Like, uh, do you have those things uh, you, you know, from last year? I said, no, they were from la for last year. I'm so disappointed. I didn't buy enough. I'm like, well, it's I'm here with different stuff. So they <laughs> also decent. They're not bad. So uh, and, they, and I don't do the the way uh, um, most artists. Uh, well, I don't understand that. It's not my um, it's not my thing. Um, and I tried to do. I said, okay, no shows. Because I'm not good at talking to people, that's for sure. Then what do I do? I start looking for galleries. And galleries, uh, the first thing I would, I grew up in Bulgaria where uh, you don't do shows. Shows is just um, a weird thing. You work with galleries uh, in Europe. In, in, most of Europe is like that. I don't think they have, they have, they have shows, but they call them markets, like something on the uh, town square that you go, and it's like a market for, it, it's exposure, it's a, expo it's a way to sell stuff, but that's not prestigious, that's not good. I mean, you can start there and then, but galleries is more, and I said, maybe galleries is, is a good way to go, but then the only two galleries in the entire country that will uh, be interested in ceramics. One is Ava Gallery, and the other one is in uh, maybe Massachusetts somewhere. Uh, I think it's Concord, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, and you can't find, the, uh, many galleries will take um, pictures, paintings, uh, drawings, but they specialize, if they're ceramics, they specialize particularly in Asian ceramics. It's a lot of uh, influence from Asia in c ceramics uh, in, in America. And I don't, I don't, 
understand Asian ceramics. They are just, they, I don't see any, I mean, I, uh, I see beautiful stuff, but I have inspiration. I mean, I, I come from different part and like Eastern Europe is where I like, I guess it's still very West Asi uh, Asian <laughs> uh, ceramics, you know, like Greek and um, Turkey and all that, like they, the, the shapes and everything, the forms, it just, this is what makes me feel good when I see a, a piece that it's a big jar or like that. That's what I, I consider good ceramics. And um, have I been too critical yet? Or I can go more. <laughs> I can say more stuff about things I don't like and how not good is. But this is what I'm good at, so please let me do it. If that's <laughs> entertaining, uh, I can do that. I, uh, I, I still, I'm a, I have a good heart. I have a good heart that I will, I'm willing to, to learn and to, to change. But this is what's going on through my head. And you want an artist talk, and I'm really an artist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking. Um, yeah. This white is just a um, slip that it's from a different, I make slip with raw materials. Mm -hmm. Mix it up and apply it over the black clay. This is the clay body that I use, the, um, the black. Um, but colors look brighter on white. Mm -hmm. uh, they look good on, it's like painting, the same thing. If you get a black paper, and paint on black paper, they'll look more vibrant, uh, more sophisticated, more uh, warm. And when you use colors on white paper, that's my opinion, they look boring. They look very bright, but they look plasticky. They, they don't look vibrant. They just not there. You know, they just, eh, we're trying. Um, that would be like a, you know, that would be chocolate compared to just the plain white sugar. The, it's sweet, but not quite the same. Um, so that, yeah, that's, the, that's what I'm, I use, like a little, I'm trying to, to compare the white clay, which is uh, white slip is also clay, that, um, with the black on the black clay body that, just gives a little bit more depth of, um, you, know, you can see little specks here. It's not quite white, like plain white like this. And when the color goes over, it creates, I particularly like the white uh, and blue combination a lot. It's really nice. I like this blue, which is different blue with, with dark brown, black kind of clay looking, but um, white is very good. And I made some red, because red is like candy, like sugar, a lot like sugar. So um, it seemed to be liked by when it's just, it's safe, people see it. They're like, oh, this is, it's red, it's safe, it gotta be good, it's gotta be a really nice thing. It, I like, I don't understand what all that squishes, squished forms are, but it's got red on it, so at least something, you know, like a glaze on a candy or with a little splash of extra sugar on it. The same thing. Experimenting. I like red a lot, but um, it's hard to, to get it well balanced, to not overly uh, power the, the whole piece. And especially if you see a, a, a bigger piece with to, a lot of bright color on it, in your living room, that's gonna scare you every time you walk by. <laughs> and it's also hard. You know, sometimes I think about, okay, this is, I like it today, but tomorrow I wake up and I go by and it's like, ah, not. So this is another thing, another topic about black and white or monochromatic um, pieces. I love that. I like the piece 
a lot on the back, not in the very back, but right here in that corner, that little brown piece that is round, yeah, with a little specks of red. Mm -hmm. This is what I, if it, if I would always make pieces like that, but then I would just stay with one thing for, for, for life, and, and I, in my brain, will go crazy, and like, what if, what, what if I use other colors? What if I do this? What if I do that? No, I love that piece and I'm gonna stay with that. But this is a piece that always makes me feel like I'm good with it. I see it, oh yeah, it's, it's good. Everything else with a lot of dynamics on it, it, it's a little hard to have it, especially in my house. If we have a piece that it's very bright, I would like it for a week and then that's getting a little bit too much. It's almost stronger than my coffee. Like I want to enjoy, you know, regular things from not being like going out in the other room and see a piece that it's, I don't know, again, maybe tomorrow. I've been thinking the same about overpowering um, pieces for a few years, so it might not change that opinion until tomorrow, but um, who knows? Mm -hmm. you yeah. Mentioned yeah, no, there's nobody. Um, you mentioned sculptural, how yeah. sculptural they are. I'm wondering if you've used other media. Mm. I like ceramics, or at least I invested in ceramics, so I don't want to uh, do, I don't want to work with other media. I work with other things that found uh, um, objects in my yard. I would build stuff and, but not for, for live or for, it's just for fun, but not, I would not consider that serious in my career. Like I would stick with clay because this is what I went to school for and I wanted to way too much money there that I don't want to just say like, oh, that's not, or in time, I mean, money in the f uh, in term of time. Um, I want to just to do the best that, uh, to experiment, to, to just to, to stretch that clay medium till, you know, I don't know how much you can stretch that, but, you know, I want to be working with clay until uh, I'm, still moving and can hold it. But sculptural clay, I would, uh, I would make with clay, I would make heads, like uh, bodies, and, but that's just classics. And then I feel like I came to America and, and those things are not very appreciated. And they're like, oh, you make classics? You so, you kind of thing that people were like, you just make, faces with, you know, and you see those only in Europe and in Canada, like real bodies of people or heads like a absolutely realistic. That is not appreciated here. And I said, well, not a big deal. I went for, I, I'm not, good thing I'm not very interested in that myself, uh, but I wanted to show that I can make faces and I, I'm good at, you know, I went to school and I, this is, what you uh, train for to make real bodies, to know the bones, to know the muscles, the skin, and um, proportions, that's also very important because all these are people or they bodies, they just have proportions. That's like, they are like us. They have you know, different proportions, but uh, it's the same thing. So I was like, I tried making some realistic um, pieces first in, and it was too, it was not, I got into that American culture with um, pop culture or, actually I got to, uh, to mid-century culture somehow because I was already there. I thought I'm very modern and it turned out that uh, it was mid-century modern who I am. You know, people say, oh, that's, you're too young to, to be making, to know mid-century and to do, uh, uh, what's mid-century? 10th century, that would be, because now we're in 20th century, so 10, uh, 10th century would be 
in the middle. So that's mid-century. So that's like uh, all these knights with, uh, what, is that? what does that has to do with, you know, I couldn't figure it out what mid-century is. And then mid-century, it turns out to be uh, 1950s in America, because the rest of the world does not know 1950s. <laughs> I learned, and, um, and then I'm still, now I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm making my way out of there. Like I was, I went through the 60s, now I'm at the 70s. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon I'm gonna be up to date where all the, you know, the new um, modern um, art is. But right now I'm between 70s and, six, uh, and 80s. So I have another 30 years to go to, to get to um, present day, <laughs> it's what I, I swear this is this is what it is. I think every time, oh, that's new, that's un unheard, that's unseen. That nobody ever made anything like that. Boom. You Google or somebody comes to you and say, oh, this is, reminds me of this one and this one. I'm like, who's that? <laughs> Bring it over here and then tell him to stop. What? How could you? I I really work hard to to invent the most amazing thing in the world in ceramics. And it turns out it's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so yeah, it's, as soon as uh, I accepted my, um, uh, like, what would that be word for that? Like I accepted my normalness, that I'm not who I think I am, I start, I feel so good about myself when I start making good stuff. But when I think that I'm uh, somebody who I'm not, it all turns out to, it's fake, it's not, it's not real. So this is why I'm talking here now and I'm making up, thing. I'm not making this up, but I'm just <laughs> trying to go through this talk and be like, hmm. So you're the uh, you, you're like the uh, you know psychologist or psych psychiatric psychiatrist psychiatrists, and I'm the the patient and I'm talking and it's like oh yeah and I'm getting to those answers myself and they're like oh yeah so this, yeah and you're like yep see yep see and that's another thing so that's how I see it. How does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm> crazy. <laughs> how? Like crazy, yeah. yeah. I know who I am. I just have a hard time to to uh, bring it out there for people to, you know, to kind of make it work. Yeah, usually talk to myself all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that? Yeah. Anyone Yeah, no questions. Good. I have a question. So you said you, you change your work has changed. Yeah. Do you see? Can you see what the next change will be? Where you'll go with clay? With mm, yeah. Well, I always. Yeah, I I see it, but I see so not more than fifty percent. Like Just the fifty percent of what uh, I will I will do next. I see, and then that's enough to just get me going, and I start making stuff and sometimes it just goes, like I realize, what was I thinking? That's, that's not gonna happen. It, but other times I go in the studio and say, okay, so now I had this uh, vision and I, um, I can, and I start working on it and, and leads me to something else and then that reveals the, ne the other 50% of my idea and uh, yeah, that's how it, it comes to a to a finish point. And if I like it, I stick with it for a while. And I always say, "That's it. This is what I'm going to do from now on." And I tell it to everybody. But people who know me already, they say, "Until the next week, right?" So then you're going to be like, "And I believe that. I believe I'm say when I'm saying to when I tell people, no, that's it. That's what I'm making. I I was pretty sure that's what I'm going to be doing for for a long time, at least." You know, six months. I forgot about this piece already, and I, I'm making something completely different. Still, you know, kind of uh, altered, uh, will thrown pieces, but 
um, like a different, a little bit different looking. Yeah, I hope to that I will get to the that perfect piece in my life that I will just be like, that's it, I made it. I, I and I don't want to do ceramics anymore. I'm just gonna do something else. But um, I'm, I feel very comfortable with ceramics now because it's been it's been part of my life for a long time. So I want to just to at least have enough money to keep buying clay when I retire and everything, or not retire, retire, but just when I get older, um, just to do little things here and there in my studio and um, that to be my, it's my religion now. It's like church stuff. I go to the, my studio and I pray all the, praise the, the, the walls and I'll go and it's like, this is my temple. I'm here, I'm gonna create my, uh, my stuff here and then they, I re religiously work in, uh, in ceramics now. Um, but it's so much out there that it's very, you know, I see things are changing and it's, art is not, maybe 50% is not a um, visual, um, beautiful things you put in your house to make you happy. Um, and then only 50% are left with people still making beautiful pieces that you don't have to uh, feel uh, weird about having it and be like, oh yeah, they, they say I, I should like it, I should buy it, but I don't understand it. So I, I, want, I want to believe that, I mean, even those are weird, they're, they're not ugly. That's what I, I think. I, I wish people or artists to, to pay m more attention on beautiful stuff, even if they not, not pretty or like something very kitschy, but beautiful um, versus ugliness. And just because, so you can make ugly art, that's still art. Everything can be art, but uh, it's ugly. And, and then you feel like that bitterness if you own a piece like that, or if you look a piece like that, you're not happy, but you, it, it changes you also in a way that goes that you, instead of being a nice person, you, you, you being a uh, not nice person. And let's make beautiful art. That's, I'm gonna uh, close with that words, with those words, these words. Keep talking. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Yeah,